Hi, I'm CP, welcome to Bespoke Unit, and in this video I'm reviewing the Avo Classic Maduro. As with all our reviews, we use the Bespoke Unit Cigar Formula, a quantifiable review matrix. Uh, you can download a blank version of this uh, to use on your reviews at home. Just head to the description, there's a link that takes you to a guide on how to use it, as well as a couple of downloadables. We also have the uh, final version of this in the full written review, which is also in the description below. With regards to their storage, they've been spending the last couple of weeks in the Bovido Crea Cubidor that you see behind me, with 69% Bovido packs, and I've been monitoring them with Bovido Butlers. This is a control set that ensures that they're properly acclimated and ready for review. Back in the 1980s, Henke Kellner and Avo Vezian worked together to create a Maduro blend, which was sadly discontinued in 2015 when Avo Cigars rebranded. However, it was released temporarily for the 30th uh, anniversary edition, I think that was in 2018. However, this year it was uh, reintroduced as part of the main classic line and it is called simply the Avo Classic Maduro. It comes in uh, three Vitolas. You have here the Robusto, which is a 5x50. You have the Toro, which is, uh, or the number two, which is a 6x50, and you have a 7x50, uh, number three, which uh, is a Churchill or a double Corona. Unfortunately, the Pyramides um, that was in the 30th anniversary edition was not reintroduced. You only have these three blends. Nevertheless, I'd like to thank Eddie Gare of Davida Cigars for sending us these, uh, as well as uh, sending us them in several different Vitolas, so Paul and I could both sample them. Uh, that's much appreciated, thank you very much. Uh, these were assembled at the OK Cigars uh, Galera, which is just next door to the uh, Davidoff factory floor. Uh, the method is an accordion, uh, handmade uh, bunching style. The wrapper is an, an American Connecticut broadleaf, uh, which, as you can see, is quite dark because it's been well aged as a Maduro. And the binder and filler are just listed as Dominican Republic. Unfortunately, they didn't disclose what particular varieties were used in there. In terms of look and feel, here you're looking at a, uh, a lovely dark seal brown. Uh, the roll uh, is, seems to be relatively consistent. Occasionally, you'll maybe pick up a couple of soft spots. Uh, nevertheless, it is not too uh, disconcerting. Uh, for example, the Robusto had no soft spots at all, whereas the, uh, the, the Toro seems to have a couple here on the foot. That being said, they all have a firm spring and a little bit of resistance when you pinch them. They weren't quite as uh, oily as I expected, still they are very appetizing, and they do have a couple of visible veins. On the uh, body and on the foot, so I had aromas of uh, some musky labdanum, some very distinct, a very distinctive note of ground coffee, as well as argwood oud, which is particularly resinous on the nose. As for the pre-line, it offers a consistently ideal draw with a, a rich plethora of flavors and aromas that consist of leather, cocoa, and a little bit of spicy cinnamon. As you can see, I'm in the final third here of the Robusto. However, I have smoked a couple of others to ensure that it is a consistent and accurate review. In the first third, I initially experienced a creamy cereal malt. Uh, this was followed by a note of uh, cloves that was particularly prevalent in the retrohale. And most interestingly, um, a, an accord of Kirschwasser, which is a type of Obstler schnapps or Eau de Vie. It's uh, a distilled fruit brandy of cherries. And that was quite distinctive. It really, really did have this succulent, sweet note that uh, was particularly notable and stimulated the front of the tongue. Once into the second third, uh, the fruitiness had uh, subsided completely and was replaced by cocoa bean. Uh, the cocoa bean was uh, accorded very pleasantly with arg argwood. Uh, argwood being the oud that I mentioned in the aromas of the foot earlier. And there was a hint of tonka bean that kind of interplayed very nicely with the cocoa. Once into the final third, the creaminess of the tonka bean and the cocoa had subsided and instead revealed coffee bean, which was particularly uh, robust, as well as a deep leather note and a hint of nutmeg on the retrohale. The flavours weren't overly intense in this cigar. It was quite complex, particularly mild with a 
perfectly middle body. Although most people see a dark cigar, they expect strong flavors. This wasn't at all the case here. It had a very smooth mouthfeel that uh, evenly distributed the stimulation across the whole palate with a nice balanced dryness. As for the life cycle, there was a distinctive evolution between each third, as you can see from what I described earlier, as well as a slightly lingering finish and a particularly pleasant residual scent in the room. With regards to the burn, I was hoping that I would be able to keep the ash throughout the video. Uh, unfortunately, just as I sat down to record it, it plopped off and uh, landed all over my lap. However, it does have an excellent ash uh, backbone and the burn line for uh, an Avo is very straight. There were a couple of issues in the first two cigars right at the beginning. However, these corrected themselves and or did need a bit of touching up. And the draw was nice and consistent throughout the whole smoke as well as providing a cool burn. As for the uh, overall experience, which is our last reviewed consideration, uh, the band has these, this beautiful uh, gold metallic color that most Avo bands do, except here it's contrasted against black because it's a Maduro cigar. You have Maduro written on one side and Avo Vezian on the other. The box, I'm afraid I can't comment on that, I don't have it, saw a couple of photos, seemed nice, but I would have loved to have gone into some extra detail there. And the value for money, if you buy a box of 25, they come to $9.80 each. Otherwise, they're just around $10 if you buy them as singles. This offers excellent value for money for Avo cigars, which tend to be around the $15 to $16 range. This is certainly a worthwhile cigar uh, to invest in and potentially age in your humidor if you're a collector. And for the occasion, this is an extremely versatile cigar. You could have it as a, at a formal event at a very well-to-do lounge, or you could even enjoy it casually with some friends, and it'd be great for an evening uh, special occasion, such as uh, perhaps the reception of a wedding, uh, a meal with friends, or going out uh, into town. Our last category considers pairings, however, this isn't scored. This is just an observation that we include in every cigar formula at the bottom right. First of all, in terms of food pairings, I would suggest, um, I often suggest char grilled meat, but specifically here I would say veal. Veal being nice, tender, uh, balanced white meat with delicate flavors. It would accord quite nicely with this medium bodied cigar that is oozing in complexity. Similarly, I would consider uh, dark chocolate. Here I have an excellent uh, recommendation. This is the Argin Curve, which is a Nicaraguan chocolate brand, Saffron. So it's got actual saffron um, pieces in it. It's not, not just ground saffron. And uh, it's a very spicy chocolate. It would accord quite nicely with this, especially once you're in the middle third and you're experiencing the cocoa bean, the uh, argo wood, and the tonka bean. Adding a touch of saffron in there would be delicious. And finally, candied peanuts, as the French call them, chouchou. Uh, those would be great caramelized flavors that would accord with the uh, nutmeg, the clove, and the uh, tonka as you're enjoying the cigar all the way through. With regards to beverages, I'm actually enjoying right now a VSOP uh, by Delors. This is an Armagnac, not a Cognac, uh, so it's a little bit more fruit forward. It's uh, got a nice rustic artisanal flavor to it. However, I would probably recommend a Fin Champagne Cognac instead, which would have those more leathery, ambery notes that correspond quite well to the muskiness of this cigar. Alternatively, perhaps an Isla Single Malt would be more to your taste. The smokiness, the peatiness would be particularly present, and it could extend the woody notes of this cigar, which it otherwise lacks and instead favors the muskiness instead. This contrast could be a particularly intriguing experience. And finally, Consider a, an espresso coffee with this rather than a latte. Probably have a double because this is a nice slow burning cigar. Uh, that would be an excellent opportunity. Or you could have the Robusto, which is a relatively short smoke and have a single espresso with that instead. To conclude, this is a very high scoring cigar with 88 out of 100, which for us is exceptionally high. That is a five star review. I'm particularly fond of the Avo Classic Maduro. In fact, I'd argue that it's probably one of my favorite Maduros. My problem with Maduros these days, particularly in the contemporary market, is that all, almost always very, very full bodied and very strong in flavor because that is what producers think the market expects. However, it's a nice surprise to enjoy a milder, uh, and it's not completely mild, it's a medium body cigar, but a milder uh, Maduro cigar with a level of complexity and a subtlety and nuances that would really be gratifying if you smoke it slowly and you carefully pair it with a pleasant beverage or snack. 
That's all for me today. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I will see you next time. Otherwise, until then, head to bespokeunit.com to see more of our men's lifestyle content and don't forget to subscribe and turn on that bell for notifications. I'll see you next time. Take care.